Okay, we are back, and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi is about to hold her news conference. She does this weekly, and then the president will address Americans about an hour from now. So we're hearing that he could be ready to offer a potential fix to the health care law. South Carolina Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy is on the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. He's been very involved in a lot of the hearings that we have seen playing out through the course of uh, this rollout of Obamacare, and he joins us now. Good morning, Congressman. Good to have Good you here. Good morning. Yes, okay, so let's take a look at what we're, we, we don't know yet uh, what the president is going to say, and I will preface this by saying that uh, there's a report from the Wall Street Journal that has come out just moments ago that says that the president plans to allow people to get the coverage back that was canceled, or some five million policies across the country that are in that, folks that are in that boat, uh, and that substandard policies would be available to people if that's what they want but they have to come with a little you know bit of information attached to them that says you should shop on the government plan because it might offer you more than you're getting in this plan what do you think about that sir uh, well there are two points number one I, I assume he now views the president as his office is having the power to dictate to insurance companies precisely what product to offer and if they cancel the product to offer it Again, but Martha, my, my fundamental question is, are you going to believe what he tells you in an hour anyway? 27 different times he told you, you and I would never be having this conversation because if you liked your insurance, you could keep it. And for those who weren't paying attention, he said, period. So are you going to believe what he tells you at 1130 this morning? Uh, or is this just a political remedy because his dream of retaking the House has now turned into the nightmare of he may lose the Senate because half of the people that he works for don't believe what comes out of his mouth. Yeah, you so know, do it, you believe what he's going to say? Well, that, that's an interesting question, uh, given where we've been so far in this journey, as you point out. And I also want to mention that we all, Fox News has confirmed uh, that that is what the president is about to propose at 1135. And we'll have live coverage, of course, of that uh, as it gets underway this morning here. But, you know, we spoke moments ago with uh, an insurance company executive or an insurance broker, I should say. And he deals with companies all the time. He said, there's, there's no way that these companies that have been working for months and months to unwind these policies and send out the letters and then offer something different are going to be able to put that back in the bottle and offer people, oh yeah, sure, you can come back home and have the policy that we just canceled three months ago. Not that easy, is it? No, it's a heavily regulated industry, and I know the word profit is not a word I'm supposed to use, but some insurance companies are actually in the business of producing a profit for their, for their shareholders. I, I think this is about politics. His poll numbers are subterranean. They're almost where Congress's is. So he needs a political remedy. This is not a legislative fix. If it were a legislative fix, he would be working with Fred Upton and the House Republicans to pass the bill on Friday. This is all about politics. He doesn't want the Republicans to ride in on a white horse and save this uh, abysmal unrolling of Obamacare. So he wants to do something administratively or through executive order. I just hope my fellow citizens are savvy enough to say, why should we believe you now? 26 different times you told us something else so you could get elected. Why would you tell us the truth now when your goal is to retake the House? All right, well, as you point out, the timing of this is very interesting because there's a House vote tomorrow on Fred Upton's bill, which would allow you to, which would basically do the same thing. It would say that you could keep your coverage that you liked uh, if, you can, if you can get it back, which remains uh, an open question here. Um, so the president may be trying to circumvent that vote and to prevent Democrats from getting on board that who want to have some cover when they go back home and, and see, see the people in, the, in their constituencies, right? That is exactly what he's doing. Now, you were gracious enough to use the word may. I, I'm not as gracious as you are. That is exactly what he's doing. I, I live on Capitol Hill. I talk to senators and House members all the time. They are terrified of what is happening with Obamacare because it's going to cost them their jobs. They can't let the Republicans fix this because, remember, we're arsonists and terrorists, so we can't, we can't do what's best for the American people. So they're going to come in with this executive order, administrative remedy at the last minute, and I just hope my fellow citizens are smart enough not to fall for it. You know, I mean, that, that, that's an interesting question, because if, if he says today, if the president says, you know, we're going to allow you to keep the coverage that you had before, I mean, doesn't it undermine the basic fundamentals of how this whole plan was supposed to work? And, yes. you know, will people be reminded of the fact, I'm sure, you know, you and your colleagues will remind them that, that Republicans try to, try to defund and delay this 37, 38 times, and we're called, you know, ter terrorists and anarchists and people who were heartless and didn't care about folks who didn't have insurance, right? 
Right, and Secretary Sebelius uh, repeatedly has said the reason you can't keep your old policy is because it's not any good. So the president today is going to say uh, you can keep your old policy even though it's not any good. I I'm sorry that I lied to you so I could be reelected to a second term. I'm going to offer this administrative remedy. I'm not going to go the legislative route, which is the route I ought to go. This is purely to stop the bleeding, to use a medical expression, because they are bleeding in terms of polls and public trust. His numbers are abysmal. The Senate is in jeopardy. This is all about politics, and I hope people demand more for me and him and everyone else in elected office. The, the, the place yeah. to fix this, Martha, was before the passage of the bill, not three years into it. Well, it seems like it, yeah, you're right. It's too late for that now. So there's two sides to this. There's the, the people at home who want to know where their health insurance is going to come from, how they're going to pay for the additional cost that that health insurance is presenting to them now, and then there's the political side of it. So, so take me through the political side and how you think it's going to play out. President speaks today, vote in the House tomorrow. There's also a proposal in the Senate that's out there. How do you see it working out? Well, he's going to give cover to, to House Democrats to vote no on Fred Upton's bill because they can go back home and try to convince their constituents that we said no to Upton's bill because we have something even better for you. Uh, and then Harry Reid won't have to bring the Upton bill uh, to the floor of the Senate because he can then say we have something even better to protect Mary Landrieu and Mark Pryor and the senators in North Carolina and Alaska. That, that's the way this goes. But Martha, that only works with an educated citizenry. That's what Jefferson said, and it's still true. And I would hope my fellow citizens are skeptical and suspicious enough of an administration that lied to them two dozen times about this very issue. Why are you going to believe them today? Why are you going to believe what Madam Pelosi is going to say in a few minutes or what the president is going to say at 1130? If he'll lie to get a job, will he not misrepresent the truth to keep it or to keep the Senate? Well, what the American people seem to want to keep uh, is the health insurance that they had and they liked and they were told they could keep. And now you guys all have to kind of figure that out for them uh, because they're feeling at sea and everybody's approval numbers are in the tank. Uh, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, Congressman Gowdy, thank you very much for speaking with us today. We'll see you next time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well, the president in a tough spot right now. Democrats are going after him. He's going to be making a statement at 1135 Eastern Time. Nancy Pelosi says the president will offer some kind of a proposal. House Minority Leader Pelosi is also going to be holding a news conference, allegedly, at uh, 1045, which was... What, about four minutes ago? Um, it's unclear whether she's actually going to do that in light of the president's remarks. So we're keeping an eye on both venues. We're going to be right back with the latest breaking news on Obamacare. If you're considering silver for your savings and retirement accounts, pay close attention to this amazing offer from Lear Capital. Now you can get $200, $400, up to $600 worth of silver polar bear coins free. The silver polar bear is a Lear Capital exclusive made from the finest silver of any coin in the world. As the only one and a half ounce coin on the market, its unique size makes it beautiful and affordable. And because it comes with a government guarantee, it's IRA eligible. With silver prices low and demand rising, physical silver could be your best move to protect your savings and retirement accounts. Get up to $600 in free 